We have a 5.3 liter Chevrolet that we're going to go through the steps to replace the water pump. Before performing a cooling system repair, it is recommended to flush the cooling system prior to installing any new parts. With the cooling system flushed and completely drained, we'll disconnect the negative battery cable before beginning the repair. You always want to be sure you're working with a cool engine. To gain access to the water pump, remove the air intake duct upper radiator hose and the drive belt. Remove the idler pulley and the belt tensioner. Remove the lower radiator hose and heater hoses. Remove the six water pump retaining bolts and remove the water pump. As you remove the water pump, keep in mind there may be some residual coolant in the system. Be sure and capture this. You will be required to remove the thermostat housing and thermostat from the old pump and install onto the new pump. There are two different thermostat housing designs. Be sure and use the appropriate gasket for your application. If your application requires the use of the paper gasket on the thermostat housing, use a light coat of sealer on the pump and the thermostat housing. Using excessive sealant can cause coolant system failures. Install the housing and torque the bolts to 11 foot-pounds. Before installing the new water pump, be sure and thoroughly clean the gasket surface. Apply a thin coat of gasket sealer to both the water pump surface and the block. It's not necessary, but it's also a good idea to apply a small amount of anti-seize to the thread area. Install the pump and torque the bolts to manufacturer specification. This is a two-step process using a crisscross pattern. Reinstall the idler pulley and belt tension. Reattach the heater hoses. And lower radiator hose. Reattach the upper radiator hose. And install the drive belt. Be sure that the belt tensioner is within the specification. Reinstall the intake air duct. Reattach the negative battery cable and fill the system with 50-50 blend of coolant and distilled water. It's a good idea to test your pressure cap. A faulty pressure cap can lead to an inefficient cooling system. If you do not have access to a pressure tester, these are available at your local parts store. Start the vehicle and allow it to reach operating temperature. Turn the cabin heater on high to help bleed air out of the system. Once the engine has reached operating temperature, check the coolant system for any leaks. Shut the vehicle off and allow the engine to cool completely. Check the reservoir tank and top off if needed. 